All right, we got questions, Bob. Karen says that her hydrangeas did not have any flowers last year, and she used green look acid loving pellets last spring. Could that be the reason? She's wondering about her, hydra her hydrangeas. No, but it, the fact that she used something to make them turn blue makes me believe that she has endless summer. And as you know, with endless summer one, the earlier ones, the first generation, really needs after a few years to be divided. The second thing is, if they're too close to your lawn, are they getting lawn furniture, which is furniture, <laughs> lawn fertilizer, which is close to the, which is high in nitrogen. So make sure they're away from that. And the second thing, don't overwater them. When you overwater them, they go vegetative. They grow leaves. They don't flower. And hopefully trees haven't grown up and, and she has too much shade. But those are the things to look for. And I believe she has an endless summer. Yep, absolutely. And if you have a lot of leaves and no flowers, you just are probably watering too much yep. or you don't have enough yep. sunshine. So good luck uh, with that this season. Now, Melanie is looking for suggestions for what to put in this very small space that she cannot fit her mower in. Right. Well, it seems like she wanted to do a garden in there of some sort. So first thing she's got to do is kill off the grass. Now, there's a couple of ways you can use chemicals, not the best. But if she wants to put a garden in there, put down some newspaper and cardboard and, you know, and then cover it with something and put layers of that. And you can actually dig holes in that and plant immediately. And at the end of the season, you can turn that right into the ground. It's organic. Make sure you use the black and white parts of the uh, no color. You know, make sure that when you use the newspaper, it's just a print because it's it's usually orga it is organic and you just turn it right into the soil. But that's about all that she can do right now. Otherwise, she could dig it up manually and get rid of it. But I really like the other way because it smothers and kills it right through the root system. That's a really good idea because then what she could do once she covers it with the newspaper, black and white, and she digs some or she cuts some holes and she puts whatever she wants in there, then she can also put mulch over that and you don't even have to see the newspaper and then eventually it'll look just perfect. Yep. And it'll right. break down, you turn it right in. That's a great idea. Okay, Ruth wants to know how to get rid of nettles without killing other plants. Yeah, the, well, there's a couple things. Like the problem with nettles is they grow by rhizome. So a lot of people say, well, just pull them. Well, just pull them. You leave a little piece of that root system and you're going to get them back. One, let's do it early before it establishes. You want to get out there now. Water the ground. If you're going to do it manually, water the ground a couple of days before. Keep it nice and moist so you can dig it out. And the other thing is if you're going to use a chemical use it properly one and two you can paint it right on the individual plants or protect the plants around it and give it a short little spray now with nettles if you're going to use roundup mix it up because the ready to use ones aren't as strong so you need something a little stronger mix it up properly and just spray it right on that plant use some cardboard or something to protect your others or mix it up in a bucket and paint it on and either way it'll kill Okay, and be careful with that, of course. Carrie has some weeds growing where she would like to like to uh, plant some grass seed. Should she spray the weeds first or after spreading the grass seed? Well, I would spray first, kill the grass seed, kill, kill the grass seed, kill the weeds first, and then plant your grass seed. Everybody seems to be getting ready. They're opening up beds. They're, you know, these problems are going to show up. How you take care of it is up to you. But there, whatever you do, make sure you do it safely and the proper way. Yeah, such a good idea. And last week you did an entire segment on lawn care. So if you want to find out exactly what yep. Bobby and Laura think you should be doing this time of year, go ahead and text GROW to the number on your screen there and you'll get that story. And you can also find it always on care11.com. I'm not sure. Do we have any other questions here? Yes, we do. Okay, here it is. What is the right <laughs> mixture of soil and compost to put in a raised bed vegetable garden? Well, my mixture with soil and compost is probably... 60 to 70 percent compost to good topsoil, pulverized good topsoil. Top topsoil, I mean, compost is the beginnings of regular soil. 
So let's use the compost. It's got the nutrients. It's got the microbes. It's got everything you need in it. So I go way more to the compost than I do to the pot, to the, to the soil. And then down the road, they can use those worm castings if they decide to learn about that. Okay, we've got one more question that just came in. Thank you so much for texting these questions. We're able to turn them around right away and get you the answers. So thank you. Good morning from Forest Lake. Well, good morning to you as well. I have moss growing along the south side of my property line. How could I get rid of that and replant grass seed? Well, if, if she's got moss, she's got shade, no doubt. I mean, that's more than likely she's got a lot of shade. Now, they used to say you could buy a moss killer, which was uh, soap, but a very high concentration, and it burns it. Um, I've used it. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. She can just dig the moss up. Hopefully, if it's shady, let's put something else there besides grass, because that's just not going to grow. Use a perennial or some sort of ground cover in its stead. But moss is tough to do because if you've got the right conditions, you're probably going to get it back. So it's probably shady and too moist. Yep, those two things. And you know, a lot of people love moss. People dig up I don't moss. Mind moss. That people dig up moss, put it with yogurt, put it in the blender, and then spread it in areas where they want moss, right? Or put it on pots. You could spread it on pots and get that kind of cool look on your clay pot with the moss growing on the sides. I love that idea. I know it's funny because I love it and my husband doesn't, so my husband is digging it up. That's the only thing he does outside well, is do that. Right. So, he, you right. put it down, he digs it up. You put it down, he digs it up. <laughs> Pretty much that's how it works in our house. Hey, Bob, have a great Saturday. You too. Enjoy this beautiful day. About time. Yeah. It's going to be a beautiful day, that's for sure. I'm getting all my outdoor furniture and get it outside so I can enjoy it tomorrow as well. So if you want to uh, join our, our Growth Care Facebook group, we would love to have you. We have over 60,000 folks and friends on it, so go ahead and check that out, and we will be right back.